Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in and thank y'all for watching the Insure Quest. Hey, today we're actually gonna end our series on the top lures for redfish and trout. Um, today we actually gonna be talking about uh, sight fishing baits, soft plastics, and my go-to baits for those. So y'all just stay tuned in and thank y'all for watching. All right guys, so today I'm gonna actually give y'all a rundown on my go-to baits for sight fishing. Um, it's pretty, you know, simple. Um, you know, sight fishing is pretty fun if you get out there in some gin clear water and you can actually see the trout and redfish actually bite. Um, you know, in the winter time, that's a really good time to start sight fishing trout. You know, a lot of people think, you know, sight fishing trout, but you know, I've actually done it. You can get out there around November, December, you know, January where those trout actually move up on the grass flats and they'll just be sitting there, you know, on those grass flats sunning, you know, trying to get warm and um, that's really fun. Also redfish, you can pretty much sight fish redfish year round. Only thing with trout, with the winter time, you know, when they move up on the grass flats, you know, summertime, they're out there deep, you know, they're out there four, five, six foot of water, so you really can't get to them sight fishing. But as far as redfish, you know, they stay shallow pretty much year round. So it's fun if you can get out there and target some redfish, you know, shallow sight fishing, it can get fun. Um, so let's get right into it. All right, so one of my go-tos for sight fishing and um, rigging soft plastics is I like rigging a quarter ounce jig head or a quarter ounce um, weighted hook and um, this is just some of you know some of my go-to's for a weighted hook right there um, you could rig salt plastics anything on that right there to sight fish and also um, I like to use a natural color uh, jig head right here that's a quarter ounce as well I like to throw that you know, anytime you're fishing around oyster beds, rock beds, or any grass flats, things like that, it's really good to go with this weighted hook presentation because you can actually make this weedless. You know, you get around grass and rocks and all that, you know, getting hung up, that can just really damper your time on fishing. And especially me with tournament fishing, I need the best time and the most time with my baits in the water. You know, if you get around, you know, muddy bottoms or, you know, anything like that that you know that might possibly not get in, you know, hang ups like oyster beds and rock beds, things like that, you can actually go with, you know, this jig head right here. And it's really good, you know. One, one really good thing about using a jig head with an open hook as far as, you know, the weighted hook is the jig head, you know, you're more off to that fascia hook, it, you know, that fascia hook itself, as far as the weighted hook, with it being weedless, you actually got to hammer down on that fish and actually get a hook set in. So that's just some pros and cons on that. You know, some of my go-to plastics on rigging with the weighted hook and jig head is, you know, I like to throw a, a paddle tail right here. Right there, that's just a Slayer paddle tail right there. It's a natural color. It's actually got some green and white in it and just some flake in it. I usually typically will go to natural colors. I usually don't adventure out on those extravagant colors. You know, natural colors, you know, mimicking a bait fish, mullet, um, pinfish, those sort of things. You know, I'll throw a jerk minnow on it too. This is just a shoe shoe jerk minnow, um, frostbite color. It's a white with some, you know, silver flake in it and it's just you know, there again, mimicking a bait fish or any kind of um, pinfish, you know, mullet coming through the water. And also, I like throwing a, uh, a crawl too on those weighted hooks and jig heads. You know, there again, this is a pumpkin with some black fake flake in it. It's just a natural color. And that's pretty much it right there. Um, you know, I typically usually like fishing with them year round. I, I, I also, I will go out there and blind cast with them a lot. You know, if I'm going through some murky water and, you know, typically redfish and trout, they won't hit top water or surf surface or anything like that. So you got to kind of go to a slower presentation bait. So if I'm going through the water, you know, if it's murky or even gin clear water and they're typically, you know, 
fish, you know, redfish, they won't always bite, you know, hard baits, top water, and subsurface and spoons. So, you know, I'll go to slow presentation and I'll start working soft plastics. And, you know, sometimes that's what you got to do to go to and get a strike and get a bite. So that's pretty much it on those. All right, guys, so one of my another good go-to baits for sight fishing is this four-inch voodoo shrimp. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about it, you know, on my page um, about this voodoo shrimp, but I mean, that's it right there. That's just a, a all natural color um, voodoo shrimp right here. And I mean, look at that right there. If that don't look like a shrimp, I don't know what does. You know, this bait's really great. Um, there again, I wouldn't throw it around any grass or you know, rocks or oyster beds, and that's really hard when you're targeting those, you know, types of fish in the inshore, but, you know, this, you know, this bait does have an open hook concept, so you're more off to get it hung or get it, you know, hooked on anything, and that can really be hard. Now, I found out, you know, on those grass beds and grass flats and on the roots, this bait has actually a weighted hook on the front, so when that bait goes down, it actually has a tendency to get hung in that root ball, and if it gets hung, you're not gonna rip that bait away from it. So, um, you know, you pretty much have to fish around, you know, I ain't saying that you could, can't fish around those areas, because, you know, you can kind of keep it off the bottom, kind of, you know, swim it like a shrimp, you can do that, but for the most part, it's kind of, you know, muddy bottoms or, you know, mud flats. I've had found, you know, redfish around those mud flats that I can use them. Um, you know, and this bait's really good in the summertime as well because in the tail, I don't know if you guys can see that, but in the tail right here, it actually has Kevlar built into the tail. So those pinfish and stuff like that in the summertime, when they come up and they want to bite that tail, you know, that bait really, it really holds up to that. And even, you know, redfish and trout, you know, I think I've caught 10, 10 plus redfish off of one shrimp. So they work really good. Um, the hook hook ratio on them is really good. They, like I said, they have an open hook concept, so pretty much they, those fish really kind of hook their sails on them. And another good thing about this voodoo shrimp, actually right here it has a pocket right here under the belly of this shrimp. So if you're, you know, if you're one of those users that like using, you know, scents, you know, voodoo, they have a scent out there, and you know, Procure, they have a scent, so. You can really put that gel inside that shrimp and you know give you a boost on getting a hookup ratio with uh, a redfish or trout. You know, put some scents on there. Ooh, you know, they do make a smaller size. They actually make a a three and a half inch shrimp. And you know, I found out with you know you're throwing into the wind. You know, the four inch shrimp don't. You know, it's got more weight. You would think that it would go further, but for the most part, you know, with it being so big. You know, the three and a half, it actually casts a little further. So that's just a tip that you want to kind of keep with you when, if you were to go with these shrimps right here. All right, guys, well, that pretty much concludes this series on my top lures and um, baits for redfish and trout. Um, if you like what we're doing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And, um, man, we got some really good news coming up here soon. I think you all enjoy it. And uh, we're actually going to be trying to get on the water next week and do some filming on, you know, trying to get in some redfish and trout and, you know, put all these lures that I've been showing y'all to use. I think it's going to be really great. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank y'all for watching, and um, we out of here.